Trading Post now, and we are joined uh, by the legendary Brian Johnson. But not the one you're thinking of, the local one from the Fulton County Community Foundation. You mean I'm not famous like I thought I was? Well, I mean, between you and the other Brian Johnson, I okay. think he's got a little bit more of a fan base than He you. does. He does. <laughs> oh, I'm good with that. So Yes, you have quite the fan base, though, so don't worry. Sometimes. Yes. Yes. Hey, nice day out there. A it pleasant is, walk. It down. is, yeah. It'd be a great day to take a walk in a park. Yes, it would. That may or may not be a hint about something we're going to talk about later today. Oh. So stay tuned for county parks and fun things going on. Yes, so, yes. Hey, a few things we've got going on at yeah. the Community Foundation right now. Um, something that we've been able to participate in the last couple of weeks and have one more coming up. Um, scholarships you know we're almost to that last day of school yeah I'm sure everybody has the number of hours left <laughs> in the 2023-24 school year yeah figured out so um, but it's it's one of my favorite times of year because we get to go and congratulate and celebrate all these achievements it's pretty cool when we start looking at scholarships um, I'm going to throw out some numbers here um, that Shannon had compiled for me um, this year, by the time we're done, we'll have awarded scholarships to 70 different students who are okay. graduating this year, 145 different scholarships, mm. so between those you know, 70 students, a few of them got more than one. Um, total dollar amount, this is just for our scholarships that we've been able to award so far this year, $238,000. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Yes. Um, I had the opportunity to um, attend Caston's program last Monday. Um, pretty amazing at the the achievements of that group. And then Friday night, this last Friday night was Rochester's um, graduation or senior honors program. Yes. And a great evening. Um, a lot of folks, so obviously Community Foundation was well represented, but um, it's pretty neat to see the support from all the community, from things like service clubs or local businesses, um, when we start thinking about that next generation. And it's pretty awesome. You, you think about the dollars awarded, um, which is not an insignificant amount, but I also, we also think about the encouragement that hopefully it provides the students. Um, when you participate in a scholarship committee, you get to sit down and look at the accomplishments that these students have already achieve during their high school career and think this is pretty impressive mm -hmm. we're looking forward to what they're doing so um, it is a financial reward but it is also an encouragement saying you know what somebody looked at my application took the time to read through it understands what i've done and believes in me enough to encourage me and say hey we believe that you're going to be successful and that's the other part of it is that encouragement. So congratulations to the class of 2024. We're looking forward to some really great things that you're going to be doing in the near future. Yes. So always an exciting time. I always tell people, if you think that kids are the problem today, let me know. We'll get you involved in the scholarship committee, and you'll find out that is not the case at all. They're right. the ones that are doing some really great things. So Yes, they are. Again, congratulations to the class of 2024. We're excited to be able to encourage you and, and stand behind you and help provide some finances to make it possible for you to continue educational goals. And, and a big thanks to our donors who have made these scholarships possible. Um, yes. When you think of Fulton County, we have donors who have created um, about 65 different scholarships that help support all different kinds of fields. So talking about scholarships, we, we just talked about seniors. Um, those college kids are probably back for the summer. Yes, they are. Kind of exciting. You, you didn't sound so excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean that. No, they're back and uh, that's yeah. always good. It's nice to have that young generation yeah. still willing to return home we're, even when they're in college. Yeah, we're fortunate. I mean, we have a couple of interns um, great appreciation to Lily Endowment for helping with an intern program for community foundations for college students. Um, we have one student who has returned for a second summer to intern with us and one that 
is here with First Summer. We'll, we'll be talking to both of those ladies probably later this year. Okay. We always do a fun program with them and they talk about things that they've learned. So um, look forward to that. I think right now we're scheduled for July for that. So look All forward right. to that. But we talk about summer scholarships. Um, we have some scholarships for folks that are have already graduated or maybe returning to school after some time away from school um, that may be for current college students or somebody looking for a graduate level degree. Um, so some of the scholarship applications that we will have and these will be available June 3rd. Okay. So um, if you're listening live on the radio, not yet, if you're watching us on RTC TV, you may be able to apply for these scholarships now. So uh, June 3rd is when that application opens. Some of the Fulton County um, related scholarships that we'll have included in that include the Ginger Miller Higher Education Scholarship. Okay. Um, that's for graduate level. There's no specific field um, in that, but something that is post bachelor's degree. So if you're going for a master's or potentially a doctorate um, in a field, that one could apply. Um, Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship. That's one specifically for students enrolled in a school of law in the United States. So um, keep an eye on that application. If you or someone you know is, is relevant for that, um, the Phillips Brahman Scholarship. Marjorie Phillips was a longtime supporter of all things Rochester High School and graduates of Rochester High School and also a big supporter of Purdue, so Purdue students who are back for the summer. Keep an eye out for the Phillips Brahman Scholarship. And then the Back Home Again in Indiana Scholarship is one that provides uh, maybe for non-traditional students, a student who completed a high school equivalency or maybe has taken a few years off and going back to complete a degree or maybe working in a field and need some extra training certificates, things like that, um, some flexibility on that. So. Dates to remember on that, June 3rd is when the application opens up. July 8th is when the application is due for that. If you have questions about that, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Shannon Berger, our scholarship coordinator, is more than happy to help with any questions. And we'd like to be able to support some folks that are either current college students or maybe living and working in our community that are looking for one of these degrees. So. Wanted to talk a little bit about our Lilly Endowment Gift 8 matching program. Yes. It's relevant to the guests that we're going to have here in a couple of minutes. Okay. Um, it's a matching opportunity for our community funds, a two for one match. So I give a dollar, Lilly Endowment matches that with two dollars. So it turns into three dollars. Can't beat that. No. Um, so we have the opportunity to raise locally $375,000 which will be matched by Lilly Endowment, $750,000. I did the math on that, the two for one. It yeah. actually works out there. And then that will turn into additional grant dollars we have every year for our community grants. Um, you're probably looking at between fifty dollars and $60,000 additional grants each year because of these funds. So, um, we're very appreciative to Lilly Endowment for this opportunity. We're also very, very appreciative of our community. Um, so far, we've raised over $200,000 of our local match okay. for that. So if folks are listening and they say, you know what, I want to support something, but I'm not quite sure, community funds may be a great opportunity to give to something that you may not know the need today, but tomorrow, it could it significantly impact our community um, in an ongoing basis. So it's really neat to see how these funds have made projects possible. So yes, contact us today. Oh yeah, yeah. we'd love to love to talk to you about that. So all right, well we have our guest with us today, um, Bill Walsh, who is involved with the Fulton County Parks Department and also the Friends of the Park. Um, we wanted to promote. We're doing something fun out of one of the new parks here in the community. Yes, you are. Have you been to Richland Restoration Nature Park? I have not. You have not? All I right. Have not. So a date to mark on your calendar, June 4th. Okay. We're going to have an open house out there. So Richland Restoration Nature Park is on County Road 450 North 
mm -hmm. between old 31 and new 31. Okay. So whichever way you're going, if you're coming on new 31, turn west, or turn east, I'll get my directions right here <laughs> at some point. New 31, turn east, old 31, turn west. About halfway between those two roads, there's a nice drive with some nice signs um, that say, welcome to Richland Restoration Nature Park. Okay. June 4th from 3 to 6 p.m. that afternoon and evening. We're having an open house out there um, to just celebrate things like the dog park. Mm -hmm. That's part of this park. Some walking trails. Sounds like there's going to be some walking tours maybe. Some park board members or friends of the park. There's some really awesome walking trails out there. I'm just kind of an open house to let folks know, show off some of the grant dollars. We've had some grant dollars that have gone out there recently to help construct um, both the dog park and also some of the things that are out there, pavilions, um, a nice drive. It's, it's in such great shape now, thanks to all who participated in that. Um, sounds like there's some walking trails that are in process, but um, we're just going to be out there um, celebrating some of our grant dollars that we've been to do. We may have some fun activities. Um, working on maybe a scavenger hunt. Ooh. Stay tuned for more details. Okay. Some fun refreshments. I mean, if you're going to go on trails, shouldn't we have something like trail mix? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Mark, June 4th, 3 to 6 p.m., Richland Restoration Nature Park. Come join us and the park board and the friends of the park. Um, find out if you've never been to Richland Restoration Nature Park, come on out. We'd love to have you join us for a walk through the park mm -hmm. or bring a furry friend, come enjoy the dog park, or just come out and see what's going on. Yeah. So, what we have with us today, Bill Walsh. Um, Bill is, has been involved in the Fulton County Parks Department for a while and has really seen some of these parks grow up. So, welcome, Bill. Thanks for having me. Appreciate having you join us. Um, we were chatting a little bit about some of the parks and the comment that I often hear is I say Richland Restoration Nature Park and a lot of times people say, where is that? Do we have that? Do we have a park in Fulton County? And the answer is yes, and we actually have that. But um, maybe tell us a little bit about, you've got a pretty cool park system. It's not just Ris Richland Restoration Nature Park. Tell us a little bit about each of the parks that are included in the Fulton County Parks. Okay. We have Albanabi Landing, which is on the, immediately west of Lighters Ford on the Tippecanoe River, where we lease part of it to DNR for a public access site. Okay. Uh, it's a small property. We do have one pavilion with three picnic tables in it yeah. right on the river. Yeah. A really neat area to stop off and have a picnic or um, get in or out of the river and it's a really busy place for people floating the river all summer yeah yeah um, and then we also have a park at germany bridge county park where yeah. there again we lease part of it at dnr for a public access site yeah um, at that location we have the germany bridge meeting center which um, that's where we have our park board meetings and everything and we yeah. ran it yeah for I think we've got around it seven times in June for graduation parties yeah. and things like that, family yeah. reunions. Um, it's got, I think, a little over 1,200 feet of river front, okay. so it's a pretty good size a, a area. A really neat area, and there's, you said the meeting room, you also have a pavilion out there that yeah, I can sit out right next to the river and enjoy nature. Yeah. We've actually got two big pavilions there now. and. I think we've got 20-some picnic tables along the okay. property there. Yeah. Um, it gets used a lot also. Yeah. Um, then we have Prairie Edge Nature Park, which is on West 3rd Street, just west of the fairgrounds. Okay. Uh, where there's a, a, about a four-acre pond with the walking trails around it. Yeah. Lots of wildflowers and things there in the summer. Yeah. Some um, fishing areas as well. well. Fishing. We have started a program this year to spray the pond and kind of clear some of the invasive weeds out of okay. it. And so that started. So the fishing week. line isn't going to get caught in the weeds on right. the ice there. That's, 
the problem. The fish yeah. like the weeds that are there, but it yeah. makes it real hard to fish <laughs> with all the weeds. So yeah. we're working on that. Yeah. Um, there's a pavilion and a gazebo and yeah. some other things. And there. a nice trail yes. around. And the trail around it is like just under a half a mile. Okay. Around that. Yeah. And a nice paved parking lot out there now. Yes. Thanks to the Belcher family, we have a nice blacked out parking lot there now. Yeah. Um, and then Richland Restoration Nature Park. If you know where Ramco Supply is on all 31, it's just immediately west of it, right behind it. It's a 60 acre property that was the old county landfill that was closed in like 1980, I believe. Yeah. That um, we've been working on for a long time, getting it fixed up into a park. Yeah. So this is kind of our newest park. Some of these are fairly visible. I think Prairie Edge, you drive past it on 31 or going out, um, uptown out to 31 in a really neat place. Um, but talk a little bit about some of the things that are out at Richland Restoration Nature Park. If somebody's never been there and they say, why should I go there? What kind of activities can I participate in? Our big thing from the beginning has been the nature part of things, you know, no yeah. swing sets and that kind of stuff. And so we have well, there are two pavilions in the dog park and two back in the back with an additional yeah. parking lot. Right now we have over a mile of trails okay. through the woods. And yeah. That area is a lot, the train's a lot different than normal Fulton County. It's yeah. really hilly in there. And, yeah. Um, An interesting and really neat place to take a walk if you're looking for some place to, right. to hike. Yeah. So. And we're in the process of clearing some more trails. So before long, we ought to have at least a mile and a half, probably, of trails. Okay. And I hear rumors that there may be some markers that pop yes. up there soon. We're in so. the process of making posts with trail signs and numbers on them to mark all the trails better. Yeah. So hopefully, we've got a good part of that done before June 4th open house. Yeah. And you mentioned some pavilions up front there are space if you're not into walking but you want to just go out and enjoy it there's accessible parking and some pavilions out there I can just sit out there and enjoy nature yes the dog park is uh, roughly 250 foot square the fans okay. and it is used a lot you know people taking their dogs yeah. out there to, yeah and, and a couple of different options so we have in our office you never know when the dog may show up at our office. Just yeah. hanging out. They're friendly. We've got all the way from small dogs to big dogs, and there's two mm -hmm. separate areas for both of those, aren't there? Yes, two separate fenced areas, depending on the size of the dogs. Yeah, so it, it's one of those things where they, they thought of those things, and you can go out and enjoy it in a safe space, of just let a dog run and play and be a dog. I know our dogs enjoy going out. Occasionally meet new friends, and <laughs> have fun, and come home all worn out because they had such a good time. So, mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool. Um, one thing that I wanted to circle back a little bit to you mentioned Germany Bridge and some of the meeting space and the space that um, is being used. If somebody's interested in using that space for a gathering, or um, you think about, we talked about scholarships, graduations, or all the different kinds of events, how would they go about? getting that space reserved. Um, they could either contact me or Mary Chesser as Vice President of the Park Board. She actually handles the rentals then. Yeah. So they could call us. Um, our phone numbers and all that are on once a month in the Sentinel on the, okay. Sentinel, on the park page. Yeah. We also have a Facebook page which is just Fulton County Parks. Okay. Um, our, Email is FultonCOParks at RTCOL.com. Okay. Neat. So, um, you mentioned the project going out at um, Prairie Edge, the, the treatment um, areas. Maybe, maybe some of the other things that are out at Prairie Edge. I know there's a wildlife viewing area um, yes. that we've been able to help with. Um, some information about the plants that are out there and kind of neat 
um, space just to enjoy around the walking trail as well. Right, we've had like three contracts with U.S. Fish and Wildlife out there that they usually come in and help us and furnish the seed for prairie grasses and wildflowers and, and they also, we've contracted with them at Richland. Uh, we just replanted a little over nine acres in yeah. prairie grasses and wildflowers. Yeah. And, and I think it's, it's neat, um, of course, I'm enjoy nothing more than being an out of doors um, to have these spaces available um, I love going to Prairie Edge sometimes I'll just sit out there at lunch and enjoy the pond and the view and um, Richland Restoration Nature Park is I think one of the coolest properties you mentioned the train um, it has it all in Fulton County so pretty cool how that has turned into, I, I promised I wouldn't mention what it was before you mentioned that it had been used for a purpose that mm -hmm. isn't quite as great as it is now, but to be able to take a space that, that was underutilized and turn it into a really neat county park is, is pretty amazing again. Um, so we've got some plans going on for June 4th. We mentioned that earlier. Um, anything you want to highlight from the, from the park board's perspective? No, the main thing is that I think we've got four nice county parks and we would basically, in all of them, the community foundation's been involved. Yeah. They have been a huge supporter and provided us a lot of money to get yeah. these parks built that we wouldn't have without them. Yeah, well, and we appreciate them. Um, I, I kind of asked a spur of the moment question before we were on the air, Bill, when, <laughs> when the park board was actually formed because I just think, you know, we've got these parks that are pretty cool, but mm -hmm. you think back and we're, you're, you're thinking it was about 2000 that, right, first thousand. Yeah, and then 2003, 2004 when the first park actually came to the park board. So I, I think it's pretty cool that we're thinking, you know, all of this has happened in about 20 years and we're yeah. fortunate to have these spaces. Yes, so, absolutely. Well, any, any last thoughts you want to share with us, Bill? I, I, I would share the appreciation of the park board and the friends of the park and um, yes. all the folks that have been involved in creating these really cool spaces for us to hang out. I don't think we often step back and realize how fortunate we are to, to have folks that step up and say we can make this happen. But any last thoughts you want to share with us? Uh, I just hope that we'll get a good turnout on June 4th. That, yeah. um, our biggest problem is getting the word out yeah. that these parks are out there yeah. and to get people to go see them that first time. Yeah. You know. yeah. Well, look, look for some fun things to happen that day, some tours. I, I heard a rumor about maybe some information about birds. Yeah, so I think we're going to have a bird walking tour and okay. um, some different things like that. Yeah. That's kind of all still in the planning, but yeah. That'll be fun and um, exciting. Yes. I know there's some, some conversation about some activities and kind of some tourism things and some park, um, a park program. So you may get some information about that and be able to stop by a, a new place, learn about a little bit more. Some of these other parks that you may not have been to. Right. So, yeah. So again, June 4th, um, join us from 3 to 6 p.m at our Richland Restoration Nature Park that's between Old and New 31 on 450 North. Um, we'll be hanging out there with some refreshments and some information about the park. Um, and again, Bill, on behalf of, of the community as a whole and the Community Foundation, we appreciate all the things that the Park Board has um, put in place and these assets that have grown to some really awesome parks. Um, keep up the good work. Thank we you. appreciate it. So, all right, well, we have students that are out there listening that are back for the summer and looking for some additional college support. Our scholarships will be available June 3rd, deadline July 8th. Um, we do have the two-for-one matching available from Lilly Endowment. And congratulations again to all the graduates. We're looking forward to the great things that are yet to come for you. So if yes. you ha have questions about anything we talked about today, you can always find us online on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, on our website, nicf.org. That's where our scholarship and grant applications 
weigh in, give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office, 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester to chat about any ideas you may have or opportunities you think we could make Fulton County a better place to live, work, and play. All right. Thank you guys so much. And uh, Brian, we'll talk to you again next month. Looking forward to it. You're listening.